Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and I hope you all had a fabulous weekend. Yes I do. Right today we're up with KS Craft and we are going to be doing Christmas until we run out of Christmas. So first up we're going to be doing the large gingerbread. We're going to turn this into a card. It is a shaker. I'm doing it as a card. I've already made the little one because I'm kind of wanting a mommy gingerbread to be holding a baby gingerbread and also that lovely sort of scallop lace edge uh, candy cane. So that's what we're using today. So first up I'll just share what I've made already and then I'm going to pause and grab my scoreboard. So I've done the, the little tiddly one. Let's get a clear image. Now the cardstock I've used is uh, basil cardstock from Joanne. Isn't that cute? And I didn't want white, I thought I'd go with vanilla. So he's got his little blue dicky bow on there and a little candy cane swirl, which is one of these. Now I think KS Craft does these, but you can get them, you know, in general on AliExpress. So I will link those. And then the little buttons on his body, so I've just dropped my uh, <laughs> my 4.5 mil flat backs, which is what you just saw there. Yeah, I've got to pick those out of my other bits. But we are going to be using the 4.5 mil, and I'm just going to scoop those up, pop those there. Yes, nothing like a good disaster on a on a Monday morning. But I've used the 1.5 mil, which are the little black buttons there on his body. So we've made that one, we're going to make the big one, and the big one is going to be holding that little one. But first, let me get my pickup tool, because I've made a right mess. Let's, I'm going to leave three on my table, I think. I've got one over here, and I've got some that have landed inside of my, my red bits, but I'll pick those out after. So these are the ones for the larger. And I'm going to share that information with you now yeah and then i'm gonna grab my scoreboard oh dear i should have had coffee first shouldn't i right so i've cut out bits and i've cut two because it's going to be a stand-up card i'm going to get my scoreboard and we're going to score it across the waistline now um this is mirror image which means you can have a nice front and a very nice back to your card as opposed to doing it like that which is, you know, it's your rough side, isn't it? From your cutting plates. And we don't want to be rough for Christmas. No, we want it to look nice. So they will mirror image, which is fantastic. And of course, that means it could be an ornament on a tree as well. Now, the stamps that I've used, I'm just going to pause and get my scoreboard and then show you the stamps. Right, so these are the stamps. These are the Peachy Keen PK 64C. Uh, princess face stamps so that's what I've used and they come in different sizes and it's the largest one there that I've used for the large one and the middling one that I've used for the little one so if you wanted those those are peachy keen stamps and also KS crafters face stamps oh and if you've got those they will work equally as well right so I've got my scoreboard I'm just putting that down there while I share my other bits. Now, this would be your shaker frame, but I just want to use it in a minute as the frosting edge. So that's going to be like my bit of frosting around my larger one. So I'm just going to move that off onto the side. I don't want to make any more mess. I can put the lid on those now. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. And I've also cut the bow. This is basil cardstock again, and this is just their kind of like tomatoey red Swiss dot. So I've cut that. I've done the candy cane, and then I've used these bits, which I've dropped my black bits into. Uh, just dotted them along, just for a little bit of extra detail. So I pop that into there, and I've done that bit. And all of my frosting pieces are just like the baby, and uh, they're cutting that vanilla creamy cardstock and there they are so you can choose which bit goes to the arms and legs because you can see they're different but i kind of prefer that down there right so now i've confused you all 
I'm going to get my scoreboard. Oh, just hang on one second. Right, I'm back and I've got my scoreboard and I've got my three little buttons and I'm just moving those out of the way. So this is the front of my gingerbread. So the bit that I want to score is the back. So we're just going to pop this down on here. And like I said, I want to do the waistline. So I'm trying to make space here because I've got my chalks on my little desk as well. There we go. Now I can push that up. So it's the waistline that I want to go for. And if I put it that way around, it's going to be a lot easier. So just make sure that you've got your legs and your arms if you've got one of these scoreboards and that everything is level below so that you can go nice and straight. And it's the waistline that I want. So I'm thinking right there. And that's cut straight along the waistline so that you'll be able to bend that and it will stand up on its little legs. Right, so that bit is done. So what we need to do now is we need to glue this onto here. And the only place that you want your glue is above the score line. So we're just going to so I've got this weird airlock on my glue bottle I'm not going to complain because it's coming out in a real fine dose which uh, is hugely money saving but look at that it's not much at all so I'm going to get that down before it dries and just line your bits up and make sure you're on there nice and straight I'm going to smooth that along that bit, make sure we're all nicely stuck down and then make sure that the legs aren't stuck so you want to lift that up and just bend it and before you go any further make sure that it stands and it does so that's what we're looking for. So now we've got our little stand up gingerbread lady or mummy and before I put the frosting on I actually need to chalk the face now I do like to use my Jane Davenport's these have now I believe been discontinued you can't get them so the best places I found is like Facebook marketplace eBay or Macari and just you know tap in Jane Davenport palette pastel and see what you can get I've got the full set and the only other thing that I could suggest that is similar is pan pastels and they are horribly expensive so the only thing I, uh, you know again I can say about pan pastel is once you've got a palette if you're only using it for crafting it's going to last you for life and probably some, <laughs> and probably somebody else is you know so I'm using this shade if you've got this one this is the lit up palette and it's the only one that's got a yellow so let's get some cheeks done first so I want to go kind of here and I want to go here so I'm just blending it out and I do love to colour with these pastels it's so easy and it just doesn't hurt your hands at all it's really gentle what I'm doing just adding that touch of colour and I don't know it just makes the characters I think and if you want to go darker you can add obviously a little bit more and keep building it up but I kind of like that because the baby is you know it's got a lot more blush on it than mummy so that is my little cheeky cheeks and if you compare them you can see there it's a lot darker but you can still see it on the mommy one and I did actually use some of my white paint pen there in the eyes just to highlight them right so now that we've done that we can put the cream frosting on because of course if I'd have done that before I would have gone and got all my red stuff onto my cream because I know me so once again we we need to put some glue on here you can choose whether you go on here or on the cream I'm going to go here so that I can see it and 
I'm just sticking, I hope, within the stitched area. And I'm hoping and praying that this glue coming out this thin isn't going to be dry before I get my frosting on. I'm just quite literally tracking a line. And let's hope it's still still wet. Right, so I'm going to work quite quickly now. And I want to get that onto there. And I want to line it up. So I'm not making real strong contact yet. So there we go. So now we've got our frosting. So the next thing we want is I'm going to put the bow on. Yeah, I'm going to stick my bow right there. I do love the expression. <laughs> so sweet. So let's put the bow right in the centre. And I want it kind of quite close up under the face. She's got that lovely coy expression. So there it is, right up underneath her cheeksies. And then next we want the hands. You can see the frosting there. And we've got frosting for the feet. Now it could be that the elements that I'm about to stick on will hide the frosting on the hands, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm kind of going to go like that. So let's stick those on. And I'm just going to dot and on the edge. I hope you're all going to have a great day today. And I hope you manage to get some crafting in. I mean, I'm one of these people, even though, you know, I kind of... I've almost got my bed in the garden. Um, I still have to craft every day. You know, I just can't help myself. Now, I'm putting the larger sections of these at an angle to the inside of the leg. And I will pick that up and show it you because I just think it looks like it was meant to be. So let me show you that because the other one's trimmed off at an opposite angle. Can you see that bit there? It kind of just seems to fit there. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Try and get them, you know, relatively lined up. So that we've got our frost in there. I'll show the little face. Isn't that sweet? I love that. I love gingerbread characters anyway. And then we're going to go into our little buttons. The ones that I dropped everywhere else. And I just want to dot these down. So I'm trying to be in the centre. And just enough glue to hold them. So I'm going there. And then I think I might use foam tape to put everything else on. So let's pick these up and pop them on. So now we've got three buttons. Let's have a look. Glue is still wet as you can see. Doesn't it come together really quickly? Now you could put a little bow into her hair as well if you wanted to. But I've got these elements here and I'm kind of thinking that I want I want to hang it onto a candy cane there and then the baby in the other arm. So I'm getting my foam tape and I'm kind of looking at the angle of that. I'll just grab my scissors and cut a little piece off here. And yeah, kind of want it at an angle 
but I don't want any of it hanging out of my project if you know what I mean so I could reveal a little bit of frosting underneath so there she is hanging onto her cane and then this one you kind of you've got to be careful how you position because you don't want to go below the stand point but you kind of want a the idea that she's hanging on to her baby right from there I can see that I can put foam tape right down the center and that is what I'm going to do I'm just cutting off a piece here and I know that if it goes in the center no one's going to see it so pop it there Now, I know that the buttons are still wet, so. Oh, there goes Bo. That must be the male lady. Yeah. <laughs> so that is it. And does it stand up? Because that's what we want to know if our card stands. So kick the side out like that because you've already scored it. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah, that's going on my shelf, that is. I love that. So as I was saying, you know, you get a larger bow. So you get two sets of bows. You get two of these and you get two of those. So you get the smaller versions and the larger versions. So you could use the larger version of that and pop it up there if you wanted to. And that would look so cute. But that is what I have for you today. And I apologise, that glue is not dry yet. But it will be very shortly. So, I thank you so much for joining me. Do have an absolutely awesome day. And as usual, all links below. Bye.